This is a cylinder bore gauge. It is used to measure the bore of a cylinder to the nearest thousandths of an inch. A cylinder bore gauge will include several different sizes of attachments that will screw into the bottom of the gauge. Make sure to select the correct size of attachment for the job that you will be doing. With the correct attachment installed, place the bore gauge into the cylinder. The extension end should be moved just below any visible lines created by wear. Once properly seated, begin to gently pivot the gauge back and forth on the extension end. The dial indicator will move along with it. Watch the dial carefully. As you move the gauge in either direction, you will notice a point in which the needle starts to reverse. This will be your zero mark. Now move the bore gauge to the bottom of the cylinder where you will see another wear line. Place the extension end just above this line and begin to pivot the gauge again. However far the dial needle moves away from your zero mark, this will be your taper measurements in thousandths of an inch. To calculate out of round, move the gauge back to the top of the cylinder and rotate it 90 degrees. Repeat the pivoting process and once again check the dial to see how far the reversing point has moved from your zero mark. The dial indicator is used to measure movement in applications such as valve lift, brake rotor runout, crankshaft end play, and camshaft runout as seen here. Align the dial indicator so the dial rod is positioned on the top of the cam journal, high enough so that the rod has room to travel up and down. If your dial has a magnetic base, be sure to activate it. Rotate the camshaft while support on V-blocks, and light the bore gauge, find the point where the dial reverses and center on the zero mark. Rotate the camshaft again, and take note of how far the needle moves away from the zero mark. This is your camshaft run out in thousands of an inch. A veneer caliper is used to acquire depth, inside, and outside measurements. It has both imperial increments in thousands of an inch, and metric increments in hundredths of a millimeter. Before using a caliper, make sure the jaws are clean. Close the jaws around an object to make an outside measurement. Inside measurements can be made using the second set of jaws on the top of the caliper when placed on the inside of an object. Depth is measured with the thin blade that extends from the bottom of the caliper as the jaws are moved apart. When you have made your measurement, lock it in place with the screw on top of the caliper to prevent any excel movement that may distort your reading. To read the caliper in inches, figure out which whole inch mark highlighted in red is nearest to the left side of your slide zero mark, highlighted in blue. This will become the first number in your reading. The second number will come from the next nine marks that follow the whole inch mark. Whichever of these is left of your zero becomes the second number in your reading. The third and fourth numbers will come from the three marks that follow the second number in your reading. Each of these three marks represents 25 thousandths of an inch, adding together as you move right with the last mark 20 to 75 thousandths. However, many marks are found to the left of your zero mark or none will add to become the start of your last two numbers in your reading. Finally, on the sliding scale where you found your zero mark, figure out which of the 25 marks lines up best to any of the marks found below it. Take the corresponding number from the sliding scale and add it together with the previous number you just found to get the last two numbers in your reading. The reading on this caliper appears to be 0 0.510. Reading the metric scale is slightly different. With each primary line highlighted in red, representing one whole millimeter. Find the nearest of these marks that is left of your sliding zero mark, highlighted in blue. And this is the first number in the reading. The last two numbers can be found by figuring out which of any mark on the sliding scale lines up best with any mark found above it. The nearest tenth mark, highlighted in green, found to the left of these marks on the sliding scale will become the second number in your reading. Lastly, the third number comes from the amount of smaller lines on the sliding scale that fit between the previous number you found and the two lines that match up. With each of these smaller lines representing two hundredths of a millimeter, including that which is aligned. The reading on this caliper appears to be 12.94 millimeters.